Hey YouTube, Vermont Prepper. What you see here is the Garmin Montana 700i. The I stands for InReach Satellites. And Garmin uses a service through InReach where you can send an SOS to a rescue team in case you need assistance in a remote location. And the way you do that is through text. It goes up through their satellites and it goes directly to a rescue team where you can text back and forth and they'll have your location from the unit and be able to assist you uh, when you don't have cell phone service. What we're going to do today is go through the initial configuration of the device as well as connecting it to both a computer and a mobile device. So stay tuned, don't touch that channel, and enjoy. Welcome to my world. We're going to talk mainly about military vehicles, solar power, and self-sufficiency. But I also like to live life to its fullest potential. I do this through music. Specifically, I'm a drummer. Music runs through my veins, and I'm also going to discuss the various equipment I use and throw in a few covers. Hope you enjoy. Welcome to the channel. As you can see, in the interest of time, I've already unboxed everything. In addition to the unit, it comes with a charging cable, and it's a USB to micro USB charging cable. I would have liked to see a USB-C, but it comes with a micro USB, and it works. That's fine. You charge it through this port right here. Your power button is right here. Your SOS button is underneath this big rubber stopper so you can't send an SOS in error. On the back, you have a port for a micro SD card. And the way you install that is you want your gold connectors down. And you have to buy this. It doesn't come with it. The maximum is 32 gigabytes, which, um, have, which I have right here. lift up that latch right there and you push it down and you slide it down and that keeps everything in place your battery pack goes in with this lip first and then you want your latch vertical and then you just twist it of course we got an instruction manual as well as a little piece of paper that gives you information on the bird's eye direct to device satellite imagery capability that this has where you can download and store satellite imagery directly onto either device or the micro SD card. Next we'll go through starting it up and the initial configuration. It will turn it on you have to press and hold the power button until you see the Garmin light come on there, that red light. It's initializing there. And I've already taken the liberty to go through all of the questions they have with language and very self-explanatory things. It's a 5-inch screen right here. It actually is, I believe, a little bit bigger than the previous 700 series unit. It's very nice touch screen. You could adjust brightness and things like that. But I'm going to go to home page first. And then you'll see right here setup, which is the second icon. And you can adjust the order of these icons as well. And then you have Wi Fi. And you can click add network. I've already added my network and password. And you just go back. You see a nice arrow there for a back button. You see system if you wanted to change your language or something like that. You have Bluetooth right here. So this is where you would set up a phone and you have to have your Garmin Connect mobile app. I'm actually going to connect mine to an iPad mini. The way I'm going to pair this unit to my Mini is through the Garmin Explore app. So you got to download and install the Garmin Explore app on your Mini. 
and you click it. And then you see right there it says pair device. So that's what I'm going to do. And you can see I have a number of things already registered. I'm going to hit add device. And then you scroll down to, actually Montana is right here. If you could see that. Right there. And it gives you the option, the 700, 700i, and 750i. And the difference between the 750 and the 700 is the 750 has a camera, which is only 8 megapixels, so I didn't get it. So now, you have to open Garmin Connect, which I already have that installed. And it comes up. The only thing I don't like about this Garmin Connect app is it comes up for mobile. They don't have it, so it readjusts the screen to fit on the Mini, but that's okay. I'm not going to use that that much. So you add device there. And it's going through initial setup. Browse all compatible devices. Here we go again. And you got to scroll down to Montana. And it says Montana 7XX, so that'll do any of the Montana series. So it says pair your Montana device before you start. Make sure the 700 is in Bluetooth pairing mode. So I'm going back over here. And you see Bluetooth. And we're going to be phone set up. And then it says download, open, connect mobile app to pair your phone and automatically sync. I'm going to continue. Okay, so now it says, when prompted, select Montana 700i, and then it gives you a number. So I'm going back here, hit start, there we go, came up with that code, Montana 700i, and then the number. And then it asks you if you're okay to pair. And now it's connecting. And it asks you again. I don't know why they're doing that, but you're going through it. Allow to display notifications. Yes. And now it says completing setup of your Montana 700 device. Alright, it says setup complete with a nice little check mark. Confirmation. Do you want location permission? I say yes, otherwise you won't be able to use this. Allow connect to use your location. I'll do that while it's using the app. Allow calendar access, sure. Almost done, it says. Sync your device. So we're syncing right now. Alright, it says finish, manage weather location, use phone location, yes, that's fine. Okay, we'll cancel out of that. And now we are connected. So, it says done, it's complete on the unit. So now I can go back. One thing I forgot to mention is that while you have to pair your mobile device through Garmin Connect, if you want to use the Garmin Explore app, you have to go into the app, the actual Explore app, and pair it with that as well. So it asks you a question automatically to do that, and as you can see, I've paired the Montana 700i with it, and it is already automatically synced. So make sure you're signed in and it should be an easy process to do that. And then now you can use the Explore app for 
uh, planting roots and things like that. Let's connect the Garmin 700i to your computer and you'll notice here that I have Garmin Express set up from when I uh, attached my Tactics Delta Solar Watch and you'll see right here it says we found a new device add this device to Express now so I have the 700i connected via USB to my MacBook and I'm going to click it recognized it right away you see the Garmin Montana 700i gives a serial number we're going to add the device you need to sign in alright we're signing in right now ask you your language let's go through that next yeah we're we have our Wi-Fi network checking for updates it says that we're completed as far as uh, adding it to the Garmin Express now it's gonna go through some updates right now it's pretty simple to set up it's all like pretty much user prompted and extremely easy so I guess there's some map updates it's gonna take a while what I'll do is I'll come back and we'll install some purchase maps on the unit after this uh, download is done once I got the Garmin installed I purchased some maps and just like my tactics Delta watch that I just got I went in and purchased all of the topo maps 24k resolution and you can find that by going into Tools and Content through Garmin Express. And then you go to Purchased. Uh, and then, I think I do Refresh, should come up. Yep, there we go. So it shows that I purchased all of these maps right here. And you can see North Central, Northeast, South Central, Southeast, etc. Uh, basically everything except Alaska and I have Alaska on you know the regular topo active map but just not at this resolution so you know you can download your map when it says ready to activate so what I'm gonna do first is do the Northeast because that's where I live and I'm gonna put that on the device I have the the SD card as well uh, which I will have to use for the other maps because this uh, Montana 7i 700i only comes with a 16 gigabyte memory so I got an additional 32 as as I mentioned previously and I'll have to use some of that on the other maps but I have enough room I believe for the Northeast so I'm gonna click ready or download right here and of course it makes you sign in it's the only thing I don't like about this it makes you sign in like uh, way too often I think here we go you go through the legal stuff now it tells you you may need an external memory card to install the content I'm hoping I don't need that for this oh actually it's telling me Oh, let's, let's see, I don't use the card. Let me try that. So it says the, the default is that it's going to use, it wants to use the card. But I'm going to try and say don't use the card. Alright, hopefully... I'll have enough room on there. I guess if I don't, it'll come back and uh, tell me. Then I'll have to do the card anyway. But I at least wanted the northeast on the device. And then if I ever had to take out the memory card and put in something else, a different uh, map of some sort, 
Uh, I'd rather at least have the northeast on and and install the other maps as I feel necessary. We'll see. As you can see here, all of the maps are installed right now. You don't have the activate button on the left or the activate notification here on the left. So I have all of these maps installed and I actually had to do all of them on my SD card. I didn't have enough room in the Garmin uh, unit itself because of all of the pre-installed maps that come with it. So you can see the ones that, again, I purchased and everything's all in sync up to date. A couple final configurations we're going to do and I waited till night so you could see the screen better. I did it during the day and it was really glary. Uh, first thing we're going to do is calibrate the altimeter. So let me go back for a second. So I'm, a, I'm on the home screen, press the home button, and then the altimeter is in the upper right hand corner right here. And you see it comes out with its display. I'm going to hit this menu button right here. Altimeter setup is the middle choice. And then the default for auto calibration is once. I changed it to continuous and I guess you use continuous I guess if you're changing altitude quite a bit it probably accesses the satellite a little bit more. That's how I would imagine it works anyway. Uh, but you could do it once if you're going to be you know just in a general area for a while. And then you hit calibrate altimeter on the bottom. Do you know the correct elevation it's asking? No, I do not. Correct pressure? No, I do not. Do I want to use the current GPS altitude of 1,211 foot? Yes. Okay, so that's the altimeter. And then the next thing, you just go back with your back button. We'll X out of that altimeter. And we'll go into the compass. So the compass is on the bottom right here. So you have your home button, then you have your map. The third one is the compass on the bottom. And you see a compass right here. We're going to calibrate that. So you see calibrate compass. So now you have to slowly turn the unit in the direction that it's shown. You hit start. So we're going to go this way, and you keep it level to the ground. Okay, that's one. And it says continue to, to the next step. Now we're going to calibrate it this way. Oh, I have to retry. Step failed. Okay, that completed. And the last one, we're flipping it front to back. Alright, so that's the compass that's calibrated. Go back to home. And that's pretty much it for the initial calibration. Now there's going to be other things that you're going to probably want to do that I haven't done. Uh, maybe maybe uh, go into the connect IQ and take a look around in there maybe there's some activities that you do that I don't uh, you might want to download some maps in bird's eye direct but that's all things that you don't need to do in order to do the initial setup uh, what I'm going to do in the future videos is go into some more of the features and it'll include actually getting an inReach account and I have another in reach that I'm going to text back and forth. I'll show you how that works. Hopefully you got something out of it. And all in all, I'm pretty impressed with it. I like the screen. I like the uh, features. It's easy to navigate. And I'm looking forward to using it. All right, everyone. Take care. Vermont Prepper out. As always, keep prepping.